Hi guys, welcome to Movie Chat and More. Welcome back, and if you're here for the very first time, welcome. Happy Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th. Are you watching any of the films tonight? I know I will be, if I'm still awake. It's been a very tough week, it's been a tiring week. But I've got to make room for a Friday film on Friday the 13th, don't I? Do you? Comment down below and let me know, guys. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking. I do have a list, okay? It, it helps. I'm human. I forget. I forget quite a bit. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about my favorite... Actually, I'm going to be ranking my favorite Jasons. The actors who play Jason all the way through. Right from... Not number one. I'm not going to talk about what's his name, the zombie kid who jumps out of the lake at the end. What's it? The list. Ari, Ari Lerman, so, something like that. Obviously, I'm not going to be including him. So I will be starting with the guy who played Jason in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. But let's crack on. My favorite Jason ever. Also happens to be my favorite Friday the 13th film ever, and it always will be. Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. <laughs> final chapter, that's still funny to this day. Yeah, Ted White. Ted White, to me, is the greatest Jason Voorhees there will ever be. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, there's just something about Ted White. His portrayal of Jason is uh, human. He's he's a monster, but he's not a monster. He can be hurt. He knows how to think. And as I said, I think in one of my previous Friday the Thirteenth videos, we see Jason in this in Friday Four. Uh, pulling out electrical wires and disconnecting phone cords and stuff like that, you know. He's he's thinking in Friday 4. Ted White, his mannerisms, his movements, I can't really say facial expressions, really. I mean, <laughs> as we know, at the end of the film, he is unmasked and we, we see what he looks like and we see what Jason looks like by the time we get to Friday 4. But everything about his everything about his portrayal of that character of Jason Voorhees is is perfect. I mean there there are certain scenes that's what I want to do. I want I want to pick out a certain scene that comes into my head straight away. I I, I don't want to look at lists. I, I don't want to think about it too much. The first one that comes to mind when it comes to Ted White as Jason in Friday 4 is a scene at the top of the stairs where you have the sister and the brother. I can't remember the sister's name. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Forget it. It will come to me. Then you got Tommy Jarvis. Um, yeah. And he's kind of, Jason is in between the two, yeah? And he's trying to figure out which one do I kill first. And the way he does that, uh, Corey Feldman was, yeah, Tommy Jarvis. And uh, the way he looks, he, he looks one way towards Tommy's sister. The name still hasn't come to me. Forgive me, guys. Forgive me. He, You know who I'm talking about? He looks at Tommy's sister. Then he looks at Tommy. Could be the other way around. And then he keeps on looking back and forth. Not not for too long, because too long would would ruin the whole scene. But that's the scene I'm talking about. When he does that, which one am I going to go for first? And he goes for the sister. He goes to Tommy's sister. He, that's the um, the intended target. But it, it's, it, it's the way that movement. He's, he's looking. He's, he's, he's thinking. He's thinking. And I love that. Ted White did that fantastically. I know you have to be directed no matter what part you're 
playing in any of these films or in any film, but you have to bring something to the role yourself. And I think Ted White did that brilliantly in Friday 4. There are other scenes as well that make Ted White stand out to me. Uh, but like I say, I just want to I just want to pop out one. The first one that pops into my head is the first one that, that's going to be popping out of my mouth, you know? So, Ted White, my favourite Jason of all time. My second favourite Jason... I still have the list. I, it comes in handy. It helps. It does help. Um, yeah. Although I really didn't have to write this one down. And it's not him. It's not. Not yet. C.J. Graham. Now, <laughs> C.J. Graham played Jason in Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. And he's portrayal. Again, I can't really talk about facial expressions. All I can talk about is the way these guys move. And when I was a kid, I remember what I, I knew of a guy called Kane Hodder. Okay, I knew of Kane Hodder. And I always thought, as a kid, as as a, when I was growing up watching these films, Kane Hodder took over the role of Jason from part six onwards. Because C.J. Graham in Friday 6, there's quite a few similarities between C.J. and Kane, in my humble opinion. Kane brings something else to the role, we all know that. C.J. Graham... Like I said, first scene that pops into my head, pops out of my mouth, and the, f the first scene I think of, when I think of Friday 6 and the portrayal of Jason, brilliantly played by C.J. Graham, is the last scene. Well, kind of, the last scene. It's where Tommy Jarvis, played by Tom Matthews this time, is in the boat, uh, at Crystal Lake, Forest Green, but you know, it's Crystal Lake. It'll always be Crystal Lake to him. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, anyway, that scene, Tommy's in the boat and he's goading Jason. He's goading him. He, Jason is attacking Megan at the time, the sheriff's daughter. I love Megan, by the way. She's great. She's fantastic. Jennifer Cook. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. He's saying, hey, asshole, I'm the one you want. You remember? Remember? Hey, maggot face, maggot head. You know. And I love that scene. And then when C.J. Graham... Yeah. See, when, when C.J. Graham turns around and walks towards the lake, you can tell he is seriously pissed. He, there's a way he walks. There's a way... He's almost rigid, and his arms are like this, and <laughs> his legs are kind of the same. He's really pissed at this moment, and he's going to kill Tommy. There's no doubt about it. Of course, he doesn't. He does his best, but that scene alone. And there are others in the movie. And sadly enough, C.J. Graham, brilliant. But there was another guy at the beginning of the, in the first few scenes we see Jason. However, they put the film together. There was another guy and there was another Jason in this movie, but he is uncredited. And I think I mentioned this in one of my Friday the 13th videos before. They thought the other guy, if you know his name, please tell me, comment down below and let me know. They cut this guy out of the film, not even halfway through, because they thought he looked too fat. Yeah. They thought for a guy who's been buried for God knows how many years, has he didn't look like he missed too many meals. That's what they said. That's not what I am saying. That's what I've seen on the documentaries. And I have... 
Uh, His Name Was Jason, that's a great documentary, and Crystal Lake Memories, that's probably even better. Yeah, apparently this other guy wasn't Jason looking. Apparently he was too big, he was too, he was too tubby, and so they brought in C.J. Graham, and C.J. Graham, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and I'm only going to say one scene, like I say, per Jason, okay? Uh, my third favourite Jason Voorhees is Richard Brooker. Now, as you may or may not know, you probably do, Richard Brooker uh, sadly passed away in 2013. Um, he was Jason in Friday the 13th Part 3. Now, 3D. Uh, there's something about Richard Brooker's portrayal that is kind of reminds me of Ted White. Like I say, to use that awful word in horror, realistic. Richard Brooker was very much realistic. He's a big guy. Or he he was a, a big guy. And, yeah, but there's something about his portrayal of Jason. He's human at this time. He's taken a lot, but he survived. I mean, he was in at the bottom of Camp Crystal Lake for God knows how many years, yeah? But <laughs> we tend to forget about that. And, and I know I do. And think about what the character of Jason has gone through since. That's what I do. Uh, that's why they've never, uh, I'm assuming they never refer to Jason as a zombie. Apart from when they're talking about Ari Lerman or Ari Lerman, uh, I'm probably butchering that name. Zombie kid. At the end of Friday 1 when he jumps out of the water and attacks Alex. But yeah, there's something really, uh, this is the best way I can describe it. There's a, <laughs> bear with me guys, I, it's, I've had a long week. Um, yeah, Richard Brooker in Friday the 13th Part 3 kind of reminds me, I'm not putting a comparison by the way, I'm, I'm not comparing these two characters because you can't compare these two characters. Michael Myers, played by Nick Castle in the original Halloween. Now Nick Castle had many questions for John Carpenter as in regards to how do I walk? It's like, because they're good friends, I, I, I'm assuming they still are good friends, and ha, had he asked, he said, John, how, how do you want me to walk? Do, do you want me to walk like this or like that? Slightly like this, slightly like that. How do you want me to walk, John? And Carpenter just turned around and said, Nick, just walk. <laughs> just walk. You probably heard that story before. But that's what Richard Brooker as Jason reminds me of. He's a big guy. He's strong. He, he, can, he survives. I mean, he survives being hung. He survives... An axe in the head. I mean, we don't know that until the next one, Friday 4, but we kind of do now, don't we? <laughs> but he's still a little, he's still, he's still got that human side, that human quality, which I really love in a Jason Voorhees character. This is why my favourites are some of the earlier films. Um, and my favourite Jasons, and that's what Richard Brooker does. He, 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 I'm not saying he doesn't hop, skip and a jump every now and then, because he does. I mean, uh, he, he's, he's quite, you know, he's quite animated. But this was the first one, as we all know, where Jason got the hock. Yeah, Jason got the hockey mask from Shelley. And a legend was born on that moment. And yeah, the... the so, one scene with Richard Brooker. What's the first scene that pops into my head? Again, I'm going to have to say the last chase scene. Uh, it, it's, it's when he's chasing the... Uh, Chris. Yeah, Chris. 
<laughs> it's when he's chasing Chris through the barn. And Chris is up on the, uh, holding on to the, some kind of wooden railing or something like that. And, uh, yeah, and he's, he, he's, he's looking for her. He's not going overly crazy, but this was the last scene they shot in Friday Free. And so they basically told him, do whatever you want, Rich, you know, <laughs> we're not coming back here. So yeah, just rip the place to pieces. And he did, but not in a crazy way, but he did it as a man, like the madman that Jason is and he did it well. So that's the scene that pops into my head straight away. It's, it's, it, I'm trying not to think of the final scenes all the time because it's too easy. I mean, with, with Richard Brooker, there are so many. Um, maybe I should think of one more with Richard Brooker. But the thing is, if I do that, I'm going to be doing it with every Jason. So let's just stick with that. That's the scene that pops into my head. The, the final scene, kind of, again, the, the third act, yeah? The third act, where he's looking for Chris in the barn. And Chris is holding on to the railing, the wooden railing, and... So yeah, Richard Brooker is my, checking the list, third, yeah, but my third favorite. And it's Friday Free. Well, coincidences do happen. Okay, my fourth favorite, and this may come as a surprise to a lot of people watching this video. You guys, my fourth favorite is Kane Hodder. Now, I know. I know. Kane's the man, yeah? And he is. But not to me. He, Kane Hodder, brought something to the role that no other Jason could, no other actor could. He is fantastic. There's something Kane Hodder does. Um, I'm not... Sure, like I said, he's Kane's portrayal of Jason to me is very much like C.J. Graham's version. But there's something Kane does apart from many other things, many other mannerisms and body movements and what have you. There's something Kane does. He when he hears a noise, when Jason, when Kane is Jason, when he hears a noise or something that gets his attention. Uh, there's something, just making sure it doesn't stop recording or whatever, you know. And it's the head, the head movement. Kane Hodder, you probably know what I'm about to say, but you never know. It's Friday the 13th, we're talking Friday. The head moves. And then the body follows. The head moves. As, what was that? I'm going to, I'm coming to kill you. Yeah. Head moves. And the body follows. That is all I have to say about, I mean, I could go on and on and on about Kane Hodder and what he brought to the role because there was many. The reason he's not my favorite Jason of all time is probably because the first time he played Jason was in part seven. The New Blood. And by this time, Jason was the unstoppable monster, you know? He could be shot a hundred times. He could have a, a machete go all the way through one side of his head, all the way out through, through his eye, out the other. Yeah, he could, he could be he, he was struck by lightning. Now, most people who are struck by lightning... Hopefully it's never happened to you, it's never happened to me. But I think if it did, the majority of people struck by lightning kind of don't survive. Now, I don't know the stats. With Jason, electricity brings him back to life. At the beginning of part six in the graveyard scene, the lightning bolt brings him back to life. So by the time we get to part seven, Jason, played by Kane Hodder, is unstoppable. Almost. You know, they end most of these films like that, you know, 
this is the last one. He's gone. But we all know it's not. So maybe that's the reason I don't put Kane Hodder higher than the other guys. Because he is the beginning. Kind of. Putting aside CJ Graham in number six. By the time we got to number seven, we're talking a total Frankenstein's monster, unstoppable killer, robot-like, Terminator-like, you know? But uh, I'm not putting that in Kane Hodder's lap. That's, that's the hand he was dealt, and by God did he play the hand well. But that's the reason he's not higher on my list. So, ladies and gents, uh, do you have the list? Uh, my next favourite Jason is going to piss everybody off no end. Friday the 13th, part 5. New beginning. A new beginning. I know it's not Jason. I know... Tom Morga <laughs> was not Jason. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't know how much I can go into this without pissing off too many people. I, it's not something I really want to do. You know, I love Friday the 13th Part 5. If you see my previous video on the Friday films, I think it's called something like Friday the 13th, my, my thoughts, my thoughts, okay, check it out, yeah, I, I know it's not Jason, but it, Tom Morga, what he did in, in that film, in Friday 5, bear with me, because I, I'm trying to defend something here that doesn't get defended often enough. Friday the 13th Part 5 gets a bad rap. It, Friday the 13th 5 is the black sheep of the family. You know, it's... You may think so too. Or you may love Friday the 13th Part 5. There's only one way I'm going to know, guys. you got to comment down below and let me know. What Tom Morgan did as Jason... We all know it's Roy, the ambulance guy, yeah? But he was playing the part of Jason. Kind of. And he did it well. Mannerisms. Body movement. Thinking about each kill before he does it. Kind of. To a certain extent. I love this film, and I love Tom Morgan as... You, Roy, the ambulance guy. Jason. And like I say, I'm going to pick out one, just one scene that comes to mind. And, and the one that comes to mind from Friday 5, there are many, but it's Reggie the Reckless. <laughs> we all are Reggie the Reckless, yeah? And there's a scene, they're in the barn, kind of like number three. <laughs> yeah. They're in the barn, and Reggie the Reckless is behind a, a panel of wood. And Jason... Sorry, guys, I'm not calling him anything else, okay? Okay, let's just call him the killer, okay? The killer. For anyone, you know, who really hates the fact that Jason wasn't the killer in this film. We call him the killer. Got a machete. Reggie is just behind this panel of wood, and he drives the machete into this panel of wood. Now, just before that, Reggie kind of smiles at him, like, hey, don't hurt me sort of thing, I'm your friend. That's what I read from that scene anyway. It's like, hey, you know. Um, but the killer doesn't really give a toss, you know, he doesn't give a, he doesn't give a crap. And he drives the machete into the panel of wood. That's what I'm remembering. It might be slightly different. If I'm wrong, you know what to do. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm right about this scene. And then when he does that, Reggie backs off. 
and shows there is a vulnerability to his character. Just like earlier on in the movie, when he's talking to Tommy Jarvis. Uh, no spider will scare me. And then Tommy turns around, he's got one of his homemade masks on, and, and Reggie backs off. And But with Tom Morga as the killer, uh, that's the first thing that comes into my head. And like I say, I could go on, but one scene per Jason. Okay, so we're, we're coming close to the end. I mean, we've got Ted White, my favourite. C.J. Graham, my second favourite. Richard Brooker, Kane Hodder, Tom Morga. You probably know where this is going. <laughs> you probably got a good idea what's coming up. Yeah, Steve Dash is my next favourite Jason. Now, Steve Dash was Jason in Friday the 13th Part 2. I love the film, the atmosphere, the cinematography, the, <laughs> yeah, just, just that. I mean, just the atmosphere of the film. It's creepy. It's, it's dark. It's, it's spooky. It's not so much scary. I mean, yeah, it's scary, but I mean, we would have been, I mean, when this, <laughs> when Friday 2 came out, I was one year old, a year old, so... I don't remember. But, so I grew up watching Jason in the hockey mask. And the black or grey, whatever, jumpsuit. The might you know. That, to me, was Jason. And being 38 years old now, it's very hard for me to watch Friday 2 and buy... Steve Dash as Jason, because we know the evolution of the character is not that guy. I like the potato head sack mask and and the dungarees or whatever it is he's wearing and and he's quite a tall guy. I can't quite remember how tall he is, but he, 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 I think he's well over six foot tall. He doesn't look it to me. But Steve Dash, uh, you know where I'm coming from on this one? I watch it now, and I appreciate what it would have been like to watch that film back in the 80s, or when it, especially when it first came out in the cinema, my God. I mean, and if they had done Friday the 13th Part 3 and left it at that, then I would probably have better things to say about Steve Dash as Jason. Of course, at the end of that movie, at the end of Friday 2, there's a guy with a very unusual name. I think it's I think it's Warren G Warrington Gillette, Warrington Gillette, something like that. Probably butchering his name too, but yeah, there's a guy who jumped through the window at the end to attack uh, Ginny, Ginny and and Paul. Is it? There seems to be a lot of Paul Pauls in the, in these films. I, I'm not too sure, but yeah. Anyway, he jumps through the window and. Uh, and that's Warrington Gillette. If I've got that name right, comment down below and let me know. Uh, and he takes a lot of credit. He takes Warrington, this this stuntman guy. And now I'm not saying he didn't do a good job of what he did. He jumped through the window. Uh, some people think it's a dream sequence. I think that's BS. I, I really don't think they knew how to end Friday the 13th Part 2. And it ended very weakly. You know, in my opinion. But that jump through the window scene is great. But it kind of... That guy kind of reminds me of Tony Moran. Now, Tony Moran was Michael Myers in Halloween. In the 1978 Halloween. He is the unmasked Halloween Michael Myers. But, from what I hear... If you go to one of these conventions where you they're all there, you know, all the Michael Myers and 
secondary characters and let's face it, people that are there for a payday because they all get paid for these signatures, don't they? There's no way that Tony Moran is going to give you his signature for free. He may do. I could be wrong. I've never been. I've never been lucky enough to go to one of these things. Okay, but from what I hear, Tony Moran takes a hell of a lot of credit as Michael Myers for that one scene. I mean, Nick Castle for the majority of the film was Michael Myers. We all know that, and it's the same with Steve Dash. Steve Dash was Jason in Friday 2, just like Nick Castle was Michael in the original Halloween. But every now and then, I do see this Warrington guy. It could just be Warren. It could just be Warren. I'm not too sure. Definitely Gillette or Gillette. And he takes a hell of a lot of credit for what he did. And, you know, fair dues. What he did was cool. But Steve Dash was Jason in that film. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. I tried not to, but you know me, guys. When I get going, I, I could talk about these films all day. And maybe one day I will. I, I, I just post a 24-hour video. It might take me two weeks to upload. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, the last two. The last two, yeah. Now, when it gets to this part of a list... They're not necessarily my favourites anymore. They're my least favourites. And the next one is... I have this second name. Ken Kerzinger. Ken Kerzinger? Am I, am I pronouncing that right? Freddy vs. Jason. Well, first of all, the guy's way too tall. And I've got to reference Halloween one more time. Kind of reminds me of Tyler Maine. As playing Michael Myers in... Rob Zombie's Halloween, which I like. It's a crap remake, but it's a good Halloween film in its own right. Rob Zombie's H2 is garbage. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> I keep on looking at this. This is his name, guys. Uh, Ken Kerzinger. Let's just call him Ken. I can't really mess that up, can I? Yeah, Freddy vs. Jason. Now, I... Uh, Here's the reason probably why I can't really take this guy as Voorhees, you know, because I, I can't take him as Voorhees because it should have been Kane Hodder. And when the movie came out, and or, or just before that, and maybe even in pre-production, actually, no, 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 no. Kane Hodder saw the film. And, but before Kane Hodder actually watched Freddy vs. Jason, he did wonder, why are they not casting me? Maybe there's some things that this new guy, Ken, can do that I can't. So maybe that's why. And then Kane Hodder saw the film. And he says, you can Google it, look it up, watch a documentary, you'll see it. Kane Hodder does say there is nothing Ken did in that film that I couldn't do. And let's face it, if <laughs> that guy was way too tall. And against Freddy, Robert England, you know, he's way too tall. So, and it would have, let's face it, it, it would have looked better if Kane Hodder Kane Hodder versus Robert England. It would have been better. If you disagree, comment down below and let me know. If you agree with that, though, think of what Jason looked like in... I'm not overly keen on Jason's look in Friday 7. Now, that was the first time Kane, as I said, played Jason. I don't like seeing the ribs and the spine. It's all a bit over the top. But the look in number eight, it's still Kane Hodder, but the ribs are not revealed. The spine is covered up. I mean, you know, come on. 
So, yeah. What good things do I have to say about Ken... Kersinger? <laughs> I'm probably still pronouncing it wrong. What good things do I have to say about him in... Uh, as uh, can, in regards to his portrayal as Jason. Well, like I say, one Jason, one scene. It has to be the rave in the field. And he, <laughs> probably one of the best scenes, if not the best scene in Freddy vs. Jason. He's walking through this field. And there are two guys that approach Jason Voorhees and... Yes, they're very stupid people. Hey, bro, this is a rave, not a Halloween party. Why don't you go find yourself a pig to... Yeah? And then the other guy drops him with something like, This is invite only, and you weren't... And just before he says, you weren't invited, Jason... <laughs> Breaks the guy's neck. He twists his head literally around. You've seen the film. You probably know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I love that scene. And then the other guy. It's like. Oh shit man. Shit man. But. The foresight of this guy is brilliant. Because what he does. He actually. If I remember rightly. He, he drenches Jason in some kind of. Petrol or gas or whatever. And sets him on fire. I mean. That's that's a pretty good way. That's a pretty good, you, you know, that's that's not bad, dude. You know, if you want to try and kill this guy, you don't know who he is. You don't know what he's been through. So yeah, set him on fire. Doesn't work. <laughs> we know that we know it, it was never going to work. But he's walking through this field. Is it a cornfield or something? And the massacre is just it's horrific. And it's cool. Uh, he just goes through these ravers, these partiers, these teenagers, one at a time, two at a time, three at a time. He, he, he's literally just kicking ass in, in, in that scene. And that's the first scene that pops into my head. But I think of Freddy, when I think of Jason in that film... That's prop yeah, the first one that pops into my head as wow, that's quite that's that's good, that's impressive. That's the scene. So my last favourite Jason. Or should I say my least favourite Jason? Got it written down, just in case I forgot his name. Derek Mears. Now first of all, yeah. Derek Mears in the two thousand nine remake of Friday the thirteenth. Reboot, remake, you know. He did his best. Now, I heard someone, I can't remember who it was, or even when it was. Someone online, maybe YouTube, it may have even been on one of the Friday the 13th documentaries, or a documentary on an, a different franchise, and a, a drop in Friday. Who knows? Somebody said at one point, in the remake of Friday the 13th, or reboot, or whatever you want to call it, there is a difference, but I'm not going to go into that now, you know. But the, um, yeah. They turned Jason into Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw, yeah? And I know where they're coming from. Because if, you, if, if you've seen any of the Texas Chainsaw massacre movies including the remake that was what 2003 now was that film wow it's quite old Leatherface is everywhere he's a hillbilly he's he's Leatherface you know there's there's, there's there's not much else I can say he's everywhere he's a crazed lunatic He's not the silent stalker. He he's not a um, he's not Jason. Leatherface is Leatherface, and he's great at what he does. 
There is no way Jason Voorhees should have become that character. And the first scene that pops into my head is, again, near the end, kind of, near the end of the remake, the 2009 remake of Friday the 13th. The first scene that pops into my head is when you, you, you got the guy and the girl. I don't know their names. I can't remember their names. They're hiding and Jason is looking and he goes completely crazy, completely nuts. And he's kicking away tires and he's he's throwing things about. He's going into a... They may not be tires, but you know what I mean, right? He's going completely nuts. He's going crazy looking for these last two on the list, yeah? But that's not Jason. You know, it's too much. It's Leatherface would do that. Leatherface would be animated in that way. But Jason never has been. Not really. And I can't really include, you know, Jason in Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, even though he was very animated as well. But there's, but a, like I say, in Friday the 13th Part 2, we didn't know any better. By the time it got to 2009 and the remake of the original film, or reboot, whatever, we know better. And for me, what Derek Mears did, it's just not Jason. So I can't put all the blame on him. He was directed, he was told what to do, and he did it. He did his job, but it's not for me. I kind of like Friday the 13th, the remake. But in the last half hour, the film, for me, dies. And that doesn't make sense, does it? Because in, in these kind of movies, in the Friday the 13th franchise, you expect the last half hour to be the best half hour of the entire film. When it comes to this one, it's it kind of dies for me. And I think that's the way Derek Mears was directed. I, it's the way he moves. He's too much. He's too fast. He he's not Jason Voorhees. He's not the Jason he, he's not Jason that I love. He's more Texas Chainsaw, Leatherface, you know? And I, for me, that film dies in the last half hour mainly because of that. He's too animated. And plus, he's too big. I, I think the guy is... I think the guy is six foot five. So he comes in, I think, at the second... as the second tallest Jason there was. I think the tallest Jason was Ken. Uh in Freddy vs. Jason. There is a fun trivia fact about uh, Ken Kerzinger, is it? Is it C? Kerzinger? Yeah. Yeah. Fun trivia fact you may or may not know about Ken Kerzinger. In, uh, he was in Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. And that's um, the scene in the diner, in the downtown New York diner. And... Jason is, again, he's got, he's got the last two. He's got the last two victims in sight. They both survive. We know that now. But he, he's chasing this boy, and he's chasing this girl, and they go into this diner. And you've got this huge guy behind the counter, and a lady who's, who's serving customers, and he's kind of back there. And when Jason walks in, and this guy turns around, it's like, I'm just going to come round, I'm going to pick you up, I'm going to throw you out the door, you got a hockey mask on, you don't scare me. Now that guy is Ken Kersinger. Kersinger. Sorry about that. I just, I'm not that great at, well I'm good at names, but when it comes to pronouncing names like that, I tend to lose the plot sometimes, so <laughs> Ken, that guy behind the counter working in the diner in Friday the 13th Part 8 is Ken Kersinger from Freddy vs. Jason. Fun trivia fact, you may or may not know that, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Anyway guys, 
That's my video today. I promised a Friday the 13th video and I have delivered. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to you guys. I always do. And I appreciate you tuning in. I really mean that. Anyway guys, once again, happy Friday the 13th. I have a terrible internet connection, so it may take me a few hours to, yeah, literally a few hours to upload this video. But it will be there, depending whereabouts in the world you are, hopefully on Friday the 13th. And you can add this, maybe, to your celebration of the day. If you do celebrate it. And if you're watching this video, something tells me Friday the 13th means something to you. I'm not talking about black cats and witches. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking about Jason Voorhees. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And soon, uh, I'm not going to predict what I'm going to be talking about. I don't like doing that anymore. I like to be in the moment. Today was different. I mean, I always love talking about Jason on Friday the 13th, but other videos are in the moment. So, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye.